In this example, we're given the general equation of an ellipse and asked to write the equation in standard form as well as graph and find the key components of the ellipse. The standard equation of an ellipse is given here. So in order to write this in standard form, we'll have to form a perfect square trinomial in terms of x and y to obtain the quantity x minus h squared and the quantity y minus k squared. So for the first step, we're going to group the x terms and y terms together and move the constant to the right side. So we'd have four x squared and then minus thirty-two x, then plus nine y squared, minus fifty-four y. Then we're going to subtract one hundred nine on both sides, so we would have equals negative one hundred nine. And now we're going to complete the square on the x part and y part of the equation, but before we do this, we want the coefficient of the x squared term and the coefficient of the y squared term to be one. So we're going to factor out four from these first two terms. So we'll have four times the quantity x squared. If we factor out four from thirty-two, that'd be eight, so minus eight x. And now we're going to form a perfect square trinomial inside the parentheses, so we'll have plus a constant, which we'll find in a minute. Plus, now we'll factor out nine from the second two terms. So we'll have nine times the quantity y squared minus six y. And again, we're going to complete the square inside the parentheses, so we'll have to add a constant here. This is going to be equal to negative one hundred nine plus two constants to maintain equality with the left side. Now to complete the square on x squared minus eight x, we're going to take half of negative eight, which would be negative four, and then square it, which would be sixteen. So we're going to add sixteen here, which will make this a perfect square trinomial. But because of this four out here, we're actually adding four times sixteen to the left side, which would be sixty-four. So to maintain equality, we'll have to add sixty-four to the right side. So we can't forget, because this four here, we're not just adding sixteen, we're adding sixty-four. And now to complete the square on y squared minus six y, we'll take half of negative six and square it. That's negative three squared, that's positive nine. So we'll add nine here, but notice if we distribute, we're actually adding eighty-one. So I'll have to add eighty-one to the right side to maintain equality. Now we'll go ahead and factor this trinomial and this trinomial, which again should be perfect square trinomials. So we'll have four times two binomials where we have x and x. The factors of sixteen that add to negative eight would be negative four and negative four. Notice how we do have a perfect square trinomial because our two factors are equal, plus nine. And then we have y and y. The factors of nine that add to negative six would be negative three and negative three. Again, notice how we have two equal factors. And then negative one hundred nine plus sixty four plus eighty one is equal to thirty six. So now we're getting close. We have four times the quantity x minus four squared plus nine times the quantity y minus three squared equals thirty six. Remember our equation must equal one. So because we have thirty six on the right side, we'll now divide everything by thirty six. So we'll divide this by thirty six, this by thirty six, and this by thirty six. And these will simplify nicely. There's one four and four, and nine fours and thirty-six. There's one nine and nine, and four nines and thirty-six. And this simplifies nicely to one over one. So our standard equation is the quantity x minus four squared divided by nine plus the quantity y minus three squared divided by four equals one. Notice how the larger denominator is under the x part of the equation, therefore our ellipse will have a horizontal major axis. So now we'll go ahead and find the key components and graph this ellipse. So again, because the larger denominator is under the y part of the equation, we know we're going to have a horizontal major axis. So our ellipse will look something like this, where the center has coordinates hk, 
the distance from the center to the two endpoints of the major axis, or the vertices, is equal to A units, and the distance from the center to the two endpoints of the minor axis is equal to B units. So looking at our equation, because we have x minus four, the x coordinate of the center would be positive four, and because we have y minus three, the y coordinate of the center would be positive three. So let's go ahead and plot the center, which would be here. Next, because the larger denominator is nine, we know a squared equals nine. Because we're only concerned about the positive value of a, we know that a is equal to three. The smaller denominator would be b squared, so b squared is equal to four. And the positive value of b would be b equals two. So now that we know the values of a and b, we can find the endpoints of the major axis, also called the vertices, and the endpoints of the minor axis. So because we know we have a horizontal major axis, the endpoints of the major axis will be a units to the left and right of the center. So if this is our center, and a is equal to three, one endpoint of the major axis would be here, three units to the right. The other endpoint would be three units to the left, or here. So we can look at the coordinate plane and tell the endpoints of the major axis, or our vertices, would have coordinates one, three, and coordinates seven, three. Of course, we also could have added and subtracted three from the x-coordinate of the center. So again, this is the major axis, and since b is equal to two, this gives us a distance from the center to the two endpoints of the minor axis. So one endpoint of the minor axis would be two units above the center, or here, and the other endpoint would be two units below the center, which would be here. So the coordinates would be four, one, and four, five. Notice how we also could have added and subtracted two from the y coordinate of the center to find these endpoints. Next, we're asked to find the coordinates of the foci. Going back to our diagram here, notice how the foci will be c units to the left and right of the center, again, since we have a horizontal major axis. We don't know the value of c yet, but we do know a squared and b squared, therefore we can use the equation a squared equals b squared plus c squared to find c squared and then c. Let's start by solving this equation for c squared by subtracting b squared on both sides. That would give us c squared equals a squared minus b squared. So we would have c squared equals a squared, which is nine, minus b squared, which is four. So c squared equals five. We're only concerned about the positive value of c, so we'll take the principal square root of both sides. So c is equal to square root of five. Because we're gonna use this to plot points on the coordinate plane, let's get a decimal approximation. This would be approximately 2.236. So going back to our graph, we now know c is equal to square root of five, or approximately 2.236, which means the two foci will be approximately 2.236 units to the left and right of the center. So approximately here and here. Notice how we would have to add and subtract c to the x-coordinate of the center to find the coordinates of the foci. So if the center has coordinates four, three, the focus on the left would have coordinates four minus square root five comma three, and the point on the right would have coordinates four plus square root five comma three. Now we want to find the eccentricity, which is equal to c divided by a, where we know c is square root five, and a is equal to three. The decimal value of this is approximately zero point seven, four, five. The closer this value is to one, the more elongated the ellipse is. The closer it is to zero, the more circular the ellipse is. And finally, we'll graph our ellipse. The graph would look something like this.
Okay, hope you found this helpful.